The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM Wednesday. we got a full day of trading today before Thanksgiving holiday tomorrow. The market's open for a half day of trading Friday. Uh, we will not be open on Friday, folks. I'm going to be digesting a lot of turkey. That's my plan on Friday. I'll be keeping my eye on the markets as well as we got some volatility coming into the holiday weekend. We got the S&Ps right now down 28 points right now, trading at 46.40. NASDAQ 100 down 132. We'll put it on a short-term time frame to see the move this morning. Uh, Nat, there's your S&P. We're down to about 46.60. We're approaching the lows we had intraday yesterday. You were as high as above 46.90 uh, at about 2 a.m. Eastern time. NASDAQ 100, growth stocks trading lower as well. Lows yesterday, about 60 points below where we're trading at right now. 16,179, down about 8 tenths percent. Dow down about 6 tenths percent, 35,560. The Russell negative by 9 tenths percent. Russell about 8 points away from 2,300, which was right where we were for the lows yesterday morning. Crude, a little bit of volatility in both directions. Remarkable. Uh, what do they say, folks? Uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. Or in this case, it would have been selling the rumor because you had crude potentially with opening up the reserves and buying the news. As in news comes out yesterday, we're going to res release reserves. Other countries are going to release reserves as well. The market says, why do you think we just traded from 85 down to 75? And with that, you're about $3 higher. Look at that acceleration. Uh, remarkable. We're up above 78 bucks on crude. Again, gold contract continuing to slide. Tough one for gold. We were at 1873 last week. I got, let's back it up 10 days, uh, even 20 days. Uh, 1879 as recently as what are we going back nine days ago 1879 so that's last week last monday i believe yeah no uh shame on me what's the 15th yeah last monday perfect uh 1879 just like that we give up about 100 bucks but crazy enough we were just at 1758 as recently as november 3rd so you're talking about 120 dollars to the upside 100 dollars to the downside all within the span of about three weeks uh says gold's got some volatility in it along with the rest of the market as well Notes and bonds, lower prices, higher yields. You hear that, folks? Lower prices, higher yields. We're approaching 1.69%. Boy, when we had uh, the Fed decision, which was Monday morning, you were sitting at 1.53, I think, something like that. I mean, you're talking about two tenths percent in the 10 year in the span of a heartbeat. Uh, we're now at 129.18. You put this thing on a three year weekly. Uh, not exactly a, a charting pattern I was following, but I had this up there just as it was going. Maybe definitely not a parallel channel line, right? Uh, but maybe a little bit of a triangle action. Maybe you're going to break out of there one way. And interesting, you line up where we are in terms of the lows of March, correlating to the lows of October, now breaking below those levels. Quite a weekly bar we got going on. It's only Wednesday. You're talking about a high of 130.24. Uh, and right now we're sitting at 129.18 on the 10-year, the 30-year, negative 11 ticks at 159.01. You see the difference, right, in the divergence of these yield curves? Uh, the 30-year, not back to even where we were in March, right? Let alone the 10-year. You're talking about uh, what was the low in March? 130.26, so a full point and more lower. Definitely a lower. You're seeing lower lows and lower highs in the 10-year versus the 30-year. You might just call that a consolidation even, right? No, no lower lows, maybe a lower high from where we were, but keep your eye on the difference there as you have that yield curve uh, being affected in a big way. All right, let's jump right into the news. We got a lot of economic data this, uh, this morning, which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll kick things off with, uh, so far, getting the most headlines. Claims for U.S. jobless benefits plunged to the lowest since 1969. Man, we're breaking records everywhere, right? I mean... It seems like we're breaking every single record for decades upon decades. And yes, we're in a time like none other for decades. So it would make sense. Um, but you're talking about 199,000. And I had stated before, 
very healthy economy is somewhere between two and 300,000. I didn't realize that we hadn't been below 200,000 since the 60s. It's the 2020s. Uh, we're at 199,000. And the point I had made was to say, you know, a healthy economy, it's probably fairer to say now, is between 250 and 300 or 350,000 jobs just for the churn of a weekly churn of a healthy economy um, of just the unfortunate situation of people losing their jobs for whatever reason in an economy that large. Uh, we're at 199,000. The argument could have been made that you don't have to just get back to a healthy point, right? With the amount of jobs that we should be making up with what's going on in the economy, if the job market is as strong as it is, it would make sense that we see jobless claims below maybe what the average or a healthy economy had been. And now you're seeing it, 199,000. Now, the data that we get to really keep your eye on, we got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next, folks, at 10 o'clock. We got live programming all day today. All right, we got Basil at 11. Uh, excuse me, Basil at 10, Larry at 11, Fast Market at 12, Steve Rhodes at 1, Dave White at 2, and Tom O'Brien at 3 as we wind out the three-day work week. Got to love that this week. Uh, but 10 o'clock, okay, what we're going to get here, jumping over to the numbers. So we got jobless claims at 8.30. Uh, we got a second reading of third quarter GDP. We'll go over that in a moment, too. Nothing too surprising uh, with October durable goods orders. But what we all, what we get that's really going to be the main event for economic data out this morning is the PCE out at 10 o'clock. So I mentioned Basel. Basel will be doing the program. We might get some movement there. Um, but PCE numbers. We also get new home sales numbers for October. You also get Michigan sentiment gauge. It's just like everybody's unloading everything because they're not coming back to work on Friday, folks. Ain't happening. We got crude oil inventory data at 1030, natural gas storage report at 12, and we get minutes of this month's Federal Reserve meeting published at 2 o'clock and we got some deer earnings as well. We got other earnings out there as well. We got gap earnings out there as well. Let's jump over to gap. Gap earnings, retail, tough, tough go around on retail. When you talk about kaboom to the downside, that's a 20% drop, folks. From 2350 to 1870, you're talking about basically a 20% drop to the downside. So we're trading at 1867. We put gap on a chart going back a year. For some context here, 1867 is below where we've been at all year. There are big time winners and losers in this retail market. Now we put it back on a three year weekly, okay? We're basically like right back to where the pandemic began in terms of $18 and change in gap. Uh, now you compare that to some of the other retailers and there's a lot of different retailers in the market. There's Nordstrom for you, JWM. They had their earnings this week. Uh, now they, had their earnings, excuse me, last night, uh, down dramatically as well. Now look at where this one, 24 bucks. You're gonna open on Nordstrom. I mean, you're gonna open in Nordstrom where you were trading at in June of 2020. You're gonna open in Nordstrom where you were trading at only a couple dollars higher from April of 2020. Folks, April of 2020, I mean, there was no business was happening. Nordstrom was not happening in any way. Uh, you compare that to the likes of a Macy's. Yeah, talk about an acceleration. They come into the pandemic at 16. They're down to four. They're trading at 33 right now. Uh, you know, Walmart's not a fair comparison to a company like a small retailer, like a Gap or something like that. But nonetheless, you see the difference. For these companies that are struggling to be at that level, pay attention, folks, because they have competitors that are doing it, let alone Target, my goodness, uh, pulling back a bit. We'll get into it a little bit more. Amazon shares this morning, trading down a bit. Amazon trading at 3580. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about. It's Wednesday. It's almost Thanksgiving. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets right now. S&P sitting down about 24 points. I got a chart of Amazon up here. Amazon, the COVID lows make it down to 1626, I think. Yes, yeah, 1626.03. The market doubles the price of Amazon by July from just where we were in March. Uh, since then, though, chopping around, we go from a consolidation basically from July of 2020 all the way through from October, uh, where this market accelerated higher, almost made it up to those highs. Last week, you're talking about a high of 37.6215. So within about $9 of that 37.73 price point, Amazon pulling back a bit. Uh, taking a look at some of the articles on Amazon even this morning. Amazon's $4 billion holiday fix, half-empty trucks, and $3,000 bonuses amid shopping snarls and record consumer spending. The company is prepared to sacrifice profit to get products to customers on time. So when they came out with their uh, – let's back this up on a daily. They've had a couple quarters where they've talked about earnings. I uh, can't recall. It might, have been, it might have been this one when they came out in July – that may have been when they talked about that they may make nothing during the holiday season. I'm trying to remember whether that was October. Time flies. Nonetheless, they've put out that they may basically make nothing during the holiday season because costs are going to rise, and that's going to eat up all of their profits. Now, when that came out, I said to myself, how does a company like Amazon that has a portion of their business in AWS where the margins are just off the charts, the business is off the charts, the growth is off the charts. It's a big portion of the reason why the stock's trading at 3,600 AWS. But point being, Amazon is in a very unique situation to be able to use that portion of their business to fight through the snarls that they, as Bloomberg put it, the snarls of the holiday season uh, to be able to keep customers happy, deliver them on time. Uh, anecdotal story, but I'm in Target yesterday real quick. I was doing a pickup order, okay, trying to get in there super quick. Needed some nighttime diapers for the little man. Got to have the nighttime diapers, folks. Otherwise, maybe he doesn't make it through the night. So those are always helpful. Uh, so I'm in there doing a pickup order uh, for a couple other things as well. I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to fly in there. It's like 2 o'clock. Get out. No, that's not what happened, folks. The uh, pickup aisle right next to kind of the customer service return area in the Target that I was in, uh, let's just call it a complete mess. There's like f probably 
eight people, not exaggerating, in line for returns and exchanges. I'm sitting there for a pickup order. Okay, I'm sitting there for a pickup order for about five or ten minutes. Somebody's going out to the cars. I thought I wouldn't sit in my car and make it as quick as possible. I'd walk into the store, make things as quick as possible. No, that was a mistake. Everything was a mistake, basically, showing up. Uh, I'm always thinking of things as a trader. And I said to myself, this place is a complete mess right now. They're a complete mess. Now, back it up to Monday, I think it was, I'm in Publix. Publix, an absolute complete mess. People apologizing that they can't get us out fast enough. I didn't even realize the store was that packed as I was in there shopping for a few things. I make it to the register, and we've all seen that scene where it's an absolute scene. They got about four aisles open for the register. Every aisle's got about five people backed up already where you can't even walk, uh, you know, move your cart through the area. Publix is a mess. Now, that's holiday shopping during Thanksgiving season. You can write that one off. Target, that's, you know, coming into Black Friday. You get the kids off school this week. I understand that as well. But it's a mess right now. You can't have it being a mess. All these companies are struggling, whether it's to keep up with wages, to keep up with the amount of employees they have. They're doing tons of business. But you're going to see that struggle persist. And Amazon, as a holder of Amazon in like a retirement account long-term position, I'm happy that they are spending that money. Now, you, you might I'm not happy if they're going to penalize the stock price because there's going to be no earnings this coming season. But the real point of what I'm explaining here is this is necessary money because there may be some big problems. Uh, that Target experience, not a good experience. And Target usually uh, does very well for their customer experiences. There, there was one person, folks, one person that was dealing with the exchange return line. They eventually called some other employee over. Amusing. They called the employee over, and the employee walks over and goes, yeah, what's going on? And the employee that's there, like, looks at the 15 people, or eight people, 10 people that are waiting in line, and goes, could you jump on a register with me? And they're like, yeah, sure. That employee obviously did not care very much about what was going on at the time. Uh, but point being, even, you know, those employees having to figure it out, get behind the customer service desk. Uh, there's like 10 people there. Then on top of it, finally, somebody helps me out with my pickup order, right? I got a couple items, a couple household items, literally like two items, three items. And then I have two boxes of nighttime diapers, as I said. So what happens? They come back. Lady goes, okay, that's seven items. I'll be right back. I'll grab them. She comes back with a little plastic bag. She says, thanks so much. I say, are the, are the nighttime diaper, are they here? She says, oh, that's the only thing they gave me. Yeah, so they're struggling, folks. They were, they were going to let me walk out. She didn't realize that I guess there were two items with it. It's a mess. That is not good. Be aware of that stuff. Uh, Amazon, they're the best at it, folks. If they're struggling to make profits during the holiday quarter, how is a company like Walmart or Target going to keep up? Now, I'll keep piling it on, okay? Now, we have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, folks, okay? I believe in that company, but they got some problems. Um, Walmart, for instance, the big thing that they have a problem with is that you order pickup for them, they're constantly out of things, and they do a replacement or something like that, right? That's unacceptable in coming into the year 2022 that consistently they don't have the type of supply management, okay, that can convey the supply available at a store as people are ordering pickup items. It makes me not want to order Walmart pickup because I know that if I order Walmart pickup, they say it's available on their website and guess what? I order it and they say, no, sorry, we'll sold out. They need to spend the money to have the inventory management software available so that people ordering things online aren't consistently being told, hey, I know we gave you the option to pick that up in store, okay, but actually we don't have any in the store. That's something they got to figure out. And I know maybe they can't figure it out quick enough, I guess. I'm, I'm trying to understand it. It's just about money. They're not spending enough money to compete with a company like Amazon. You don't order something on Amazon, folks, and then they say it's sold out, okay? You can't pick it up same day. That's the battle that they're dealing with here. But Walmart, not a great experience, right? They didn't have, I, I did pick up at Walmart and Target yesterday for a couple things. They're close by. Not a good experience. Walmart didn't have everything I wanted. They had a replacement that was okay. But even ordering it, I said to myself, this is going to be a real bummer if they don't have everything I want because I'm only getting a few things at each place. So I have that sentiment in my mind around Walmart. Sheesh, I hope I get what I want when I order, right? That's not good, folks. And they, they should be able to fix that for a company that size competing with Amazon. Uh, and then Target, it was just a mess. It's going to be a mess in the holiday season. But it was a little bit of a wake-up yesterday, folks. Get out and get everything you can. 
because the line at the return exchange customer service line is the one that kind of blew me away. It's right near the front of the store. So it was like an absolute scene and a half at the front of the store. There's about eight to 10 people all waiting in line for customer service. There's two or three people waiting in line for a pickup, right? Where's the manager? I don't know. There's two employees. There's one behind the customer service desk that has to call over another employee. And then the other employee that gets called over doesn't say to themselves, oh, do you need some help? No, they say, what do you want? <laughs> the person says, can you grab a register, please? And they say, yeah, sure. They could care less about what was going on, obviously. Uh, so nonetheless, when you see Amazon might give away all their uh, holiday profits, that might be an okay thing in the long run, folks, because this is going to be quite a holiday season. And if it just takes some half-empty trucks and some $3,000 bonuses and they get the job done and keep everybody happy uh, and Walmart's a mess, Target's a mess, I'm just creating the possibility, okay, uh, in the long run, that's going to pay off. We'll get into it a little bit more when we come back, some of these numbers, but that's the basics of it. You're talking about logistical efforts. See that? Logistical efforts. Walmart needs to improve their logistical efforts so that you can order something and know it's in the store. Pretty simple, right? Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&P right now, negative about 23 points. We got the NASDAQ 100, negative 108. Dow off 211. 
Russell right now negative by 16. We got Bitcoin trading down 1700 bucks, kind of skipping right to the low. 56,000 been the area that it's found a little bit of a support going back to last Friday. Crude sitting at 78.23 right now. You got gold down a buck at 17.82. Gold, the lows yesterday, right kind of where we're trading at right now. You had a low yesterday of 17.8170. We're trading right now at 17.83. And we jump to the all important notes and bonds. Got the tenure down about four ticks. We were as low as 129.16. We're trading at 129.20. You put this thing on a daily. Uh, well, there's a weekly. Put it on a daily. Uh, the trend is your friend to the downside, that's for sure, right? You match up the highs, you match up the lows. The lows were right near that lower portion. Be interesting to see if that trend line holds sitting at 129.21. And that is correlating to a yield. I think we're talking about pushing 1.69% uh, approximately. Let's pull it up. Where are we at? Yeah, 1.68 now, 1.68%. Over in Europe, you get the DAX down 1.1%. FTSE down 0.2% over in Asia. Nikkei was down 1.5% last night. All right, jumping around to some of the stories that I got up here uh, as well. Jamie Dimon. So it was interesting. I was chatting uh, with my dad early this morning, uh, about 6, 7 in the morning, and he had said, did you see Jamie Dimon, his remark? I think he's going to regret that one. Uh, and before I knew it, within about a half hour getting off the phone, Jamie Dimon regrets quip J.P. Morgan to outlast China Communist Party. Uh, you don't say that you're going to outlast a dictatorship in China, folks, if you want to do business in China. Uh, I wish more industry leaders would actually stand up to the garbage going on in China as opposed to just trying to do business there and profit off it. That's a whole show we could do in terms of whether it's, you know, right up and down the line from the NBA to Tesla uh, to Apple to J.P. Morgan doing business in China and China just basically snatching up their citizens and throwing them away if they say the wrong thing. And I'm not exaggerating. Uh, J.P. Morgan has almost $20 billion of exposure in the Chinese economy. And uh, let's get down to what he had said. He made remarks Tuesday during a, a talk at the Boston College Chief Executives Club, where he discussed his company's commitment to China in a wide ranging comments. We hope to be there for a long time, he said. Uh, and he relayed a joke he made during a recent visit to Hong Kong. Careful on those jokes, folks. The Communist Party is celebrating its 100th year. So is J.P. Morgan. And I'll make you a bet. We last longer. You think President Xi is going to take him up on that bet? Yeah, he'll take him up on that bet, all right. And uh, he'll just lock up everybody at J.P. Morgan. Bet one. Done. Uh, with nearly $20 billion of exposure in the world's lock second economy, big ambitions to expand even further. The U.S. Bank has a lot riding on maintaining cordial relations with a government that's sensitive about anything that might be construed as questioning its legitimacy. I mean, anyway, it says it says what it is. Uh, and these are the banks. Uh, billions of dollars of exposure. Citi, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, well behind. Uh, members of the New York-based bank, this is J.P. Morgan, the government relations team and China offices had internal discussions about Diamond's remarks after he spoke Tuesday. They're already chatting about it. Uh, while some executives ex expressed concerns, the joke could be viewed as insensitive. The government relations team told the group that Diamond intended to stress the longevity. Yeah, uh, you can't be joking about the end of a dictatorship with a dictator. That is not an amusing joke to the dictator, folks. I mean, it's just you can go on and on. Uh, and this is the part I want to get to. Earlier this year, J.P. Morgan won approval from Chinese regulators to fully own its China securities venture. They are just allowing this to come to fruition where you didn't have to have basically a minority stake with a China-owned majority ownership. Now they're allowing foreign companies to have total ownership, uh, a sign that U.S. financial forms are, firms are forging ahead with plans to expand in the country despite tensions between the two world's two largest economies. I would say so. And at the top of this, they had him pulling back uh, his statement there. I regret and I should not have made that comment, he said in the statement of the bank Wednesday. I was trying to emphasize the strength and the longevity of our company, not the weakness of a dictatorship, is how he should have finished that sentence. Uh, we'll jump over to J.P. Morgan this morning. They're higher. No worries. I mean, they're not going to go lower. Who are yields are going, folks? Uh, J.P. Morgan 
You're seeing higher highs and higher lows right now. We're trading at 168.59. We were trading in a 159 handle as recently as five days ago, folks. What's that, Friday? Yeah, Friday we had a 159 handle. We got a 168 handle today uh, as rising yields. The bank's liking that idea in a big way, higher today by about three-tenths percent as well. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, Mr. Elon Musk speaking of. He's selling those shares, folks. He's selling his 10%. He's uh, he's going to get to it. That's that's my take on it. And I think you'd be hard-pressed to argue the other side of him not getting there. Uh, he's offloaded 9.2 million shares and exercised options. Uh, $9.9 .9 billion he's cashed in. And he's only halfway there to what he's going to be selling. I would imagine that the market has basically priced in that he's selling them. He sold another 934,000 shares. Uh, according to a uh, filing posted Tuesday, carried out to cover taxes related to Musk exercising an additional one, uh, 2.15 million stock. They show that puts him at 9.2 million shares versus 9.9 .9 billion since he conducted his Twitter poll asking whether he should sell 10% of his holdings. Twitter said he should, and he said he'd abide, and that would be 17 million shares. He's only right now at what they say, 9.2 uh, million shares. He's got about half of it to go. Tesla, down 3.5% right now. Potentially on that news, potentially on the news, we got rising yields. There's a lot going on in the market right now. But nonetheless, you're lower. Everything considered, I'd say it's held up pretty well when you have the founder selling a $10 billion position in uh, Tesla. Now, the thing that's interesting here, you zoom in on the action, right? I mean, Tesla's doing 30 to 40 million shares a day. And that's recently. I mean, you get some of the big moves, you're doing 50 to 60 million shares a day. You're doing 35. Even at the lower troughs recently, you're doing 21. You go back to some calmness, you're doing 15 to 20 million shares. Point being, he sold a million shares. Yes, that is going to affect the market. In a stock like Tesla, that you're doing the volume that you're doing, probably not going to affect it beyond the fact that it should affect it when you have the CEO selling out of that position. Uh, keep your eye on that, folks. I mean, I've said it before. It's kind of a reach, but there's nothing to say that Tesla, you know, he might move on in some capacity from Tesla. Tesla is on a ramp that is just accelerating in a big way. They are around for the greater future. They're a trillion-dollar company. Uh, Elon is an innovator, a creator. He's a visionary. And I wonder whether he's turning the point, and he'll always be involved in Tesla, I imagine, but maybe he's turning the point to saying, you know what, maybe I don't need, you know, $100, $200 billion tied up in Tesla shares. Maybe I'll start dumping some of that, uh, diversify my position, and start doing other things besides maybe trying to travel to Mars. It's possible, folks. No other creator would kind of just abandon their company and maybe move on to something else. Elon's the one guy. I mean, he did PayPal, almost went bankrupt after doing PayPal to create Tesla, let alone SpaceX and everything else that comes with him. Remarkable that you're pushing right now, even right now. Hopefully you guys got me. There we go. Uh, you're talking about a company with a market cap of $1.07 trillion. That's what the founder selling a $10 billion position. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps down 20, NASDAQ 100 down 142. We'll be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets right now. S&P's down 26. NASDAQ 100 down 163. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Every Wednesday, folks, at 40 past the hour, we talk to Teddy. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, you almost ready for some turkey Thanksgiving, man? Sure, yeah, Mike. I'm down in Arkansas visiting my mom, so I just moved her into a new place yesterday, and uh, they have to replace a brand-new dishwasher this morning, so I'm doing this in, uh, from the deck. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Well, I'm glad you joined us because uh, it's a short and trading week. We're closed Friday, half day in the markets. Um, but, man, let's kick it off with crude, Teddy. Uh, you're probably uh, sticking to your guns with the action we got Absolutely. yesterday. But we got to we got to talk about it in terms of, you know, the the reserve is released and, and it had mm -hmm. been speculated for some time. And, and people had said that's not, you know, it's a small plug and a big problem. Uh, sure. But pretty interesting action that you get the three to almost four dollar rally yesterday. We're sitting at 78 bucks and change in crude. Right. Uh, what, what do you see in that market right now, man? Keep on rallying, baby. Keep on rallying. You know, right. I just left Chicago a few days ago and the gas prices were just under four dollars a gallon. Ironically, I'm here in Arkansas and it's almost a dollar less. It's kind of weird. So um, that's crazy when you think about the pricey difference between just 750 miles in the United States. So, um, but the taxes are higher in Illinois, so that's probably the reason. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm still very bullish on oil. I can't see it even remotely dropping. You got to think about how much fuel we're wasting every day because you got all these diesel trucks sitting idle waiting for them to get their containers emptied and trucks loaded, you know? So sure. that's one big problem, you know, as far as, uh, I mean, the oil trade's got a lot of issues. I'm still bullish. I'm looking at $100. Uh, I, like I said a couple weeks ago, right now, this is a consolidation. Um, it's hard for anyone to even say that this is going to turn around and go south and be a bearish market and uh, be better for us right now. I just don't see it. There's no reason to even remotely look at oil as being bearish whatsoever. I mean, I think yesterday was the exclamation point, man. If, if, if you know, mm -hmm. how can you be a bear when you get that type of news? And uh, it was expected, so I get that type of mm -hmm. deal, but but quite a three to four dollar pop, man. Just like nothing, right? Back to almost eighty bucks. Uh, right. And I love I love the Chicago Blackhawks, man. You're working it. You're in uh, you're in Arkansas. <laughs> it's really extra. So just like trading for my friend, it's Jeans Day. <laughs> Gotta love it, man. Thanksgiving out with the family, it's perfect. Uh, yeah. Okay, so so forex, man, we got a lot going on in forex as well. We got the dollar to highs. Where do you want to kick off on, on the forex market? 
it's it's a layup fundamental rally in the U.S. dollar right now. I mean, since Sunday night, the bond, the thirty-year bond is down over three basis points in two and a half days. Right there, if you can't know that the dollar is going to get a, a rise on that one, well, you're in the wrong business, you know. So, and the bonds are like half of the eight, ten ticks lower today already this morning. Yeah, so there's their best the support. You know, the uh, the British pound is falling like a rock. The euro is tanking. You know, yeah. and the Australian dollar. I mean, now that we're seeing that these detaining uh, COVID facilities or concentration camps, whatever you want to call them, they do exist, and they're sending people there. Uh, Australian dollar is gonna is just a rock falling into the sea. It's gonna keep on tanking now. There's there's no reason for that market to lift at all. You know, so I think that you're yeah. gonna see. Remember, we were talking about you know the the, the yen getting up to 116. Where we broke out, we were last week. We were talking. We were buffering under highs. We had a little correct, little sell off. We're right there again. We're just under 116. I I can see us hitting that by Friday, if not to even later today. You know, so um and uh, 122 I think is still a very valid target for the U.S. dollar yen over the next couple of weeks going into the end of the year. Yeah, you really can't deny that trend almost like you can't deny the trend in crude mm-hmm. going on man um, right quite the consolidation even around 110 from april to october mm-hmm. and the thing takes off almost to sure. 115 uh right yeah quite quite the move now for forex markets because mm-hmm. i'm not familiar how does i know think you know thanksgiving is a u.s holiday um right but does that affect things? I know U.S., you know, of course, they're a big player. Mm-hmm. But how does that affect the Forex market, something like our holiday? Closed tomorrow, and really a lot of people closed on Friday. We got a half day, but mm-hmm. we're, it's one of the only days we're actually closed um, when the market's open at TFNN. How does that sure. hit a Forex market? Well, you know, it does hit the Forex market because you got to remember that except for, you know, the stock market will, is shutting down early, you know, what have you, and it has the holiday hours in the United States. But you got to remember our bond market also has holiday hours. So that when the bond market has fewer hours, that starts to constrain the currency market because no matter what, our interest rates drive the biggest pricing value in the currency markets. So, I mean, obviously there's not going to be any Fed moves over Thanksgiving or anything like that, you know, sure. but the, the machines aren't shut off, but they're not running on full throttle, you know. So and I always tell people holiday markets, stay away from them because, one, they're very thin. I don't care if it was 40 years ago or four days ago. Holiday markets are just a trap. Unless you're in a position and you're managing it, you should not be entering or even – you should be on vacation. Take a holiday. It's why it's a holiday, you know. So um, you get a lot of erratic movements, and that's something you may see um, because we have a lot of numbers that like you were talking about earlier that are coming out today. Um we could have the algo starting to spike around, uh, but my th- feeling right now is that the trend is so strong because the interest rates are tanking, the, the dollar is railing. That momentum, I think, going into the holiday is going to be exacerbated because of the drying up in, in liquidity. You know, you have guys like myself, after I get off with you, my positions are set. I'm not going to look at anything until I get home this weekend. You know, it's done. Yeah. You know, I mean, whatever happens, happens, you know, not that everyone's going to do that, but the majority, I would say, of the professionals in the industry will be. Now, Europe and Asia, are they going to do much? Probably not, unless we do have some big reaction. There's not a lot of news that would shake them up, you know, so I don't really think you're going to have that type of effect, you know. Um, but Monday, I would think that we're going to have a scrambling market, you know. So um, I liked your little little piece about Jamie Dimon's comment. You know, I'm, <laughs> I first personally don't like the guy. Um, I like the joke. Uh, <laughs> and it's I think just, that more people should do it and stand up to China. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, for the amount of money that those companies have just to, to mm-hmm. make that decision with everything going on. I mean, it seems like over and over that story, man, no matter how big you are over in China, whether you're Jack Ma or whether you're that mm-hmm. poor tennis star recently that came out and accused right. the vice premier. Um, right. It's scary stuff when people can just sure. disappear from public, you know, the moment right. they say anything about leaders over there. So sure. it's, uh, you know, at All some the point money to speak out while you can. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, and the end. Show- and the NBA players, and listen, over here, I think it gets overdone, the, the beef they get about everything going on. Um, mm-hmm. But I think they should catch beef for, for the way that they don't care about anything going on in China. And it's all about cash for the NBA. And it, it spans everything. Um, they just come to mind, you know, how 
anyway, uh, mm -hmm. money's only worth so much, man. In China over there, it's bad news. I don't, I don't, you know, you go over to China, you behave, everybody, because everybody's watching <laughs> you over in China. Seriously, right? Uh, right? So we, you know, for for all the forex markets moving, Teddy, we got about a minute left. Um, sure. What's the one you're looking at the most, with maybe the most conviction? Because there's been some big moves, and I think mm -hmm. the trend is, you know, right what you're talking about. What's the mm -hmm. one that you have the most conviction on as we as we look at those markets? Uh, your your favorite currency and one of mine, the U.S. dollar yen. I am a raging bull. I think that with all conviction that this thing is not going to stop. Uh, 116. We're, we're I've been calling this one for a month, saying that by sure. Thanksgiving around this time, and we are yeah. right here. We're we're half a dollar cool. away. You know, so um, and uh, not to toot my own horn. <laughs> no, it's but, uh, it's yeah. big time, man. You have with so, that in oil. It's been yeah. listen. I appreciate these conversations. I know the listeners do too, man. Well, well Teddy, enjoy think, Thanksgiving, uh, man. Yeah. 122. Yeah. We'll be talking to you next Wednesday, man. All enjoy right. that beautiful foliage out there, man. I love those I leaves will. out there. Have, have a great Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. You do too. All right. Take Thanks, care. Teddy. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secure investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's right now down 27 points, trading at 46.60. Uh, and as I said, you got Basil Chapman coming up next. Should be an interesting day in the markets. Uh, we got action 
already, but we're going to get the PCE out at 10 a.m. So look for that data point. Baz will be on the air doing his program. Uh, should be interesting action, as I said. One final story I wanted to look at before we wrap up the program. As college enrollment plunges, schools must adapt to post-pandemic reality. So about half of the country's post-secondary institutions saw a 3.2% drop in student enrollments this year on top of a 3.4% decline last year. That's a 6.6% drop over two years, raising concerns fewer Americans see the value of post-secondary education. Because I was very lucky to have an amazing education. Went to an amazing high school up in Dedham, Massachusetts, Noble and Greeno. Very privileged, an amazing high school. Kind of just, uh, I think it was one of the greatest influences of my young childhood. That education went on to Villanova University after that. Very fortunate as well. Uh, but man, some of these numbers that they're paying for um, tuition these days is just staggering. And when you think about it, I have a young son now who's not even one year old. He's going to be hopefully going to college in 17 or 18 years. At some point, if you save for college and saving for college costs you four or five hundred thousand dollars, maybe you say, I'm going to give you four or five hundred grand when you turn 18, maybe in a trust or something, as opposed to putting you through school, uh, using up the half million dollars. And yes, education is always worth it. But Things have been out of whack for a long time with the way that they're just pushing out loans, uh, allowing these schools to raise their prices. Um, and when you get into it, in terms of where the breakdown was, here we go. I just want to finish this up. Uh, well, the drop in college and university enrollments occurred across public and private with two and four year. Community college hit the hardest. That's a real bummer. Um, falling 6%. After a staying 9.4% last year, public four-year programs down 2.5%. The other side of that is these schools had a nerve charging full tuition when you were doing business online. I mean, part of the best experience of college was being around people and, you know, the life knowledge that you learn from the age of 18 to 22. If I'm sitting in front of a computer and paying 60 grand to go to some big school, that is not a good experience. All right, folks, that wraps it up. Have a great Thanksgiving. Stay tuned. we got live programming all day. Basil's up next. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.